Hi, I'm Richard West, and the Photographer Academy have invited me in today to talk to you about colour calibration of screens. The purpose of this is to make sure that on screen, you can trust the colours you're seeing. And make sure that when you're retouching, you know that anything you do, anything you adjust, will come out the same at the end of the process. And that, that process might be going to print, might be going onto the web, might be going into an app. So today we're going to be using the Data Color Spider to calibrate uh, this display. Um, we've got it running from this computer here, so we're running, driving two displays at the same time here. Uh, that's why we're going to be using the Spider Elite in this particular example. Splash screen here is the kickoff. Uh, Data Color have just launched the Spider Elite HD, which is aimed in to both photography and videography. Um, so the first splash screen gives you the choice of what do you want to be calibrating. Do we calibrate a computer screen, a laptop desktop screen? or do we calibrate a TV or a playback screen for video? So we're going to be doing a computer screen here. We're driving this straight from the computer, and we're going to be looking at stills photography. So uh, let's choose that. It's already highlighted there, so let's uh, go on to the next frame. And this will boot up the, uh, the Elite software with this spider. Okay, so the first stage in the calibration process is really more setting up the environment for the process, i.e. the first few uh, steps in the, the uh, the window here are taking you through making sure that you've done the background to it. Have we got the screen warmed up? It's been on for 30 minutes at least, so that's what we'd like to see so that it's come up to temperature and the colours are going to be stable at that point. Uh, is the lighting condition that you're in correct? You don't want to have a bright window next to you because that could affect the way you're perceiving things in the morning versus in the afternoon versus in the evening. So try and make sure that you've got a neutral, standardised lighting environment. And then go into your displays, have a look at it and see <clears throat> if the brightness, the contrast is set up the way you'd like it to be. If it is, great. If not, adjust it before calibration, not after, because otherwise you won't affect the calibration. And lastly, make sure you've plugged in your spider. It's USB, so plug it in the slot. So, that done, let's click on to the next stage. We're going to go through a step-by-step -step assistant. We're just going to uh, go for the, the the easiest process for you to get to a calibrated environment here. We could look into things like the expert console, but uh, to be honest, nine times out of ten for general photography, it's going to be fine with this scenario here. We come to one of our more mature masterclasses if you want to see, see more about the advanced side of things. The studio matches if you're working in a design studio environment and need to match between multiple machines, not just multiple displays. Okay, so in this case, we've already calibrated both the displays. We're just going to go for a recal in this scenario. We're leaving all the controls to a standard environment. So this, the default uh, settings here for gamma, for white point, and for brightness, generally speaking, are going to be okay. Check with your monitor or display manufacturer if there's any specifics that need to be put in there for those particular devices. We're going to start off by doing a calibration of the ambient light sensing. So we've got a little cradle to sit our ambient light meter in, or our, our uh, calibration device in here at the moment, at the top. And once you pop it in there, we just click on next, and that's gonna start doing the sensing. And you see the little blue light working on the device. And that's sensing the, uh, the ambient light, i.e. the surrounding light conditions. Okay, we're gonna accept those suggested conditions. <coughs> And then now, all we need to do is basically drop the spider calibration device down so it's hanging against the, uh, the display window. Just going to make sure that's butting up tightly there. There's a little counterbalance on the back end. This is actually the USB cable we're using to hang the device. A little counterbalance on the back of that, which essentially allows you to, you can adjust that, and allows you to hang it at the right level, depending on the size of the display. So once it's in the right position, just within that banding box there that you can see, click on Next, and we can sit back and let the calibration process take place. What it's going to do is it's going to run a selection of different colors in front of the eye of the device. There's a sensor basically on the, the front of the spider here, which is reading the colors. That connects up via USB to the computer, and there's software on here, which we've been running, which knows what those colors should be read as. So this process allows us to compare the before and the after, or rather, the, what it should be with what it's reading it as. And the difference for each of the colours and each of the colour swatches is built up into what we call a profile. And that's a, an international standard, an ICC profile, the Interna International Colour Consortium profile. And this allows us basically to 
make sure that our displays are in a uniform, organized um, color environment. So I'm just going to go through some of the adjustment process. You can adjust things like brightness here. We've already done this to be perfectly honest, so it's uh, just, just about uh, right. We'll click on continue in this particular scenario. Okay, so that's taken about five minutes to run. Uh, we're now calibrated, we've finished the, the process. So all we need to do is click on finish. And this brings us back out into the, uh, the software window where we can just see the final elements of what we're doing. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna give a, a name to the, uh, the actual calibration. And it's always good to, to date that as well. So you've actually got a, a relevant um, point you can say, okay, we, we know when that was. And you can see how things change over time because displays do change over time, as I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, so with this, we're going to call that um, today, just for just for uh, ease of use sake, and we'll call that uh, we'll, we'll call that a hit. Save. Congratulations, we've calibrated the display here. Of course, if we wanted to calibrate this machine as well, we then move the. Uh, calibration device the spider down onto this particular screen and then we could calibrate this and then they'd match. So moving into the next window, we've now done the calibration. It's actually applied the profile, the calibration to the computer and display combination. So you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to put it anywhere. It's already done. Uh, but now we've got a, a selection of uh, test target uh, images that we can use split into quadrants. So we've got this top right hand quarter is split into uh, skin tones and portraiture style images. On the left hand side we've got more general colour chart uh, shots. Down here we've got something uh, aimed at landscape photography and over on the bottom right hand side we've got more black and white uh, images. And if you click on any of these basically you can see how we can zoom into a particular quarter and then within, at any point we can switch between the before and after view to see the pre-calibrated, i.e. that's before we calibrated the screen, and the post-calibrated uh, look and feel, basically, so we know, we can see the difference there, basically, in what we're doing. And again, we can zoom in to see individual images if we want to. So, there we are, we've, we've done the calibration. Key thing next is to just look at the final element, which is showing you what that, uh, that profile we've just created. Essentially, that's the, the color space that the, uh, the, um, the screen we're looking at works in. And in the case of the ISO, we've got it listed here. So that is, uh, that is that red banding line there. And you can see here, actually, that's a fairly large, uh, chunky color space compared to sRGB. That's the, the green triangle here. So you see we've actually got a far bigger color space uh, available to us on the, the ISO display than we have for sRGB. So if I perhaps compare that with Adobe RGB, you can see it's almost giving you the whole of the Adobe RGB color space. In fact, it tells you that it's 93% of the, uh, the Adobe RGB color space. It's why it's a very good monitor, basically, why it's very uh, impressive and you've got more color gamut to work with, so therefore you can uh, be in more control of the colors you're working with in, in retouching. If I give you a bit of a comparison as far as uh, different times for different uh, displays are concerned, I'm just pop into any of these uh, windows at the top here, and I can choose, for instance, the laptop I, I have, actually not this laptop, is a different laptop, but um, laptop uh, profile here compared to one done more recently. Uh, there. So you can see here how that's a before and after of a particular laptop screen and how it's, it's actually, um, if I compare that in sRGB to, uh, to show you the bigger change here. As far as sRGB is concerned, the, the shots of, uh, or the, the the profile of that display almost a year ago from the, the date it was next calibrated, or the next date we're looking at that it was calibrated, is about 97% of sRGB compared to 94% a year later. So we're knowing that uh, over time, over about a year, it's lost about 3% of its color space. So it shows you why you need to be doing this on an ongoing basis. You know, we'd recommend to you, to be honest, to be doing this on a maybe a monthly or a, a weekly basis, depending on how important colour is to you. And in fact, you can uh, you can set that particular uh, parameter if we uh, pop back into um, uh, an earlier stage here. Back in, back in the uh, work uh, profile setup, you had the opportunity to set that uh, that um, time phase to to go back in there, basically. So at this point, now we're going to we're going to leave the software. We're going to say. Um, that's it, calibration done. Um, we've been using the Spider Elite for this particular setup, 
But basically, we could be using the uh, uh, Spider Pro, which is just the, the slightly uh, less fully featured version of the, the Spider Elite. Both of them can do two displays or more on the same computer. And then we've got the, the Spider Express, which is the, the entry level, more um, consumer or hobbyist type uh, device. Actually, still a very high quality device, so um, it's still going to give you a cracking result as far as calibration is concerned. But it limits you to just being able to calibrate one display, basically. So you can't actually uh, calibrate the two displays that we've got here. And also, it doesn't have an ambient sensor to test the surrounding environment as well. So that's it. Away we go. We're now ready to work on our images within our softwares. And of course, we're in this calibrated environment, so we can actually trust what we see when we're working in, for instance, things like Photoshop and Lightroom.